Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about mplug2, which is a multimodal foundation model for text, image, and video tasks. So let's get started. What is mplug2? Right. So several people have been doing multimodal pre-training. However, the multimodal pre-training using a single architecture, single model architecture, has this important problem called as multimodal entanglement. The problem is that it is difficult to train a single model for multimodality, even the large variance of many modalities and several tasks. So if you're trying to train the model for many, many tasks, there's this multimodality uh, modality entanglement problem, right? So it doesn't really turn well. Now, mplug2 tries to, uh, but then at the same time, you have to have uh, multiple modalities being modeled together because after all, it's a multimodal model, right? So the way mplug2 solves this problem is by having a very modularized design. Uh, and essentially, the way it does is that uh, it has these modality specific encoders, but at the same time, it also has these universal layers. So universal layers try to bring in modality collaboration, multimodality collaboration, while these uh, language, uh, these, these modality specific uh, modules essentially try to bring in, uh, you know, modality uh, or handle the modality descent, uh, modality entanglement problem. Okay. Um, so as you see in this particular, uh, you know, on the right side, uh, there are various kinds of tasks here, video question answering, text classification, image captioning, image classification tasks. So if you look at video question answering, it's a video and text task. Text classification is just a text-based task. Image captioning is an image and text task. Image classification is just an image task, right? So, so the architecture for plug model is such that you have um, uh, modality specific encoder. So for video, you have video encoder. For text, you have text encoder. Image, you have image encoder. And then you have in universal layers, which try to sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, come up with the revised embeddings for those particular modalities by doing cross attention, right? And then you also have this visual linguistic fusion, which uh, depending on the task, it basically tries to uh, fuse the vision and the language information. Uh, of course, video and image are both visual in that senses, except that video also has a temporal component. So it tries to incorporate the temporal component as well. Right. Now, um, you know, if it is basically uh, just an image task and does not involve any text, you can uh, sort of uh, avoid making use of any text encoding as such and come up with a label dog here in this case, right? So depending on what is the particular task and what kind of modalities it involves, you may invoke certain modules and you may not invoke certain modules at all, right? So that's that's the kind of design that mplug2 has. We will talk about detailed architecture on the next slide, but uh, broadly it has an architecture which enables multimodal collaboration while avoiding multimodality entanglement problem, right? So that's, that's the basic mplug2 architecture. Now let's look at the details of the mplug2 architecture, right? So essentially, this is the detailed architecture that is that I'm I'm trying to show. So uh, you know the full architecture is on the left side. Uh, the uh, enlarged or the more detailed version for that is on the right hand side, right? So of of some of those modules on the left hand side, what you see is that you uh, start with uh, you know when you have text, you essentially start with the text encoder. You also have a dual vision encoder, so as to basically encode your image and video. And then you have universal layers out there. Uh, you know, if you basically uh, have just language kind of tasks, you can actually try to come up with predictions for language kind of tasks right from this particular representation. But uh, uh, because because it is incorporating both the text information uh, and also you know some kind of dual and uh, dual vision encoding uh, in the sense encoding of image and videos. But further, if you have like multimodal tasks, specifically multimodal understanding tasks, you can actually pass uh, the dual vision uh, encoder and text encoder representation through universal layers module, and then you can actually also pass that information through fusion module. So remember, the universal layers module still gives you different representations for the text and another representation for the vision part. So the fusion module tries to fuse that information through cross attention. So this visual part basically is supplied as cross attention so as to get a fused representation. And you can use the output of the fused representations for various multimodal understanding tasks. Now, but if you further want to generate stuff, so for example, image captioning and so on, you want to basically also use this transformer encoder, which basically, of course, consists of self-attention, cross-attention, and feed-forward networks, so as to basically come up with generated outputs. Okay. Now, in this architecture, there are a few new um, modules, as you can see. So, for example, there is this dual vision encoder modules, and there are also these universal layer modules. Let's basically talk about them. 
So dual vision, visual, uh, dual vision encoder module is basically to encode images and videos, and uh, this is how it looks like. It's basically multiple layers of uh, a transformer encoder, uh, um, you know, typical transformer encoder, except for some changes. So let's look at those changes. So typical transformer encoder basically contains uh, self-attention and feed-forward network, and they have special self-attention and feed-forward network for the image modality, right? So for the image modality, they do just those. However, for the video modality, there's also this third dimension of time. And uh, therefore, uh, you know, they have this extra uh, third sublayer called as local temporal modeling. So for the images, you have only two um, layers, um, sublayers, special self-attention and feed-forward. But for videos, you'll use three sublayers, local temporal modeling, special self-attention and feed-forward. Right. So now what does do tem local temporal modeling do? Well, it basically does uh, temporal modeling. So essentially, um, uh, so essentially, if you think about a video, you can think about a video as a 3D cube, basic, uh, you know, where this is the height, this is the width, so that's basically a single frame, but then you can stack multiple frames together in the depth dimension, and therefore you can capture the time aspect uh, via the depth, right? So uh, in the local temporal modeling, uh, temporal modeling uh, module, the way they model this stuff is to basically, uh, you know, try to figure out temporal correlations between the same spatial positions. So same uh, positions, uh, X, Y coordinates, basically across time, they try to find relations between them and pull across them uh, using uh, using convolutions. So essentially, uh, you first define groups. So you can define groups of uh, uh, pixels across time, and then you can come up with a single representation for them. And that provides you with your local temporal features, right? So essentially, that's the way that the local temporal modeling is done. Essentially, it is basically modeling the same XY coordinate across time uh, where you have grouped uh, certain frames together and certain points together so as to essentially get grouped features output, okay? So this output is basically provided as extra tokens to special self-attention. Remember, uh, you know, when you're trying to uh, you're trying to uh, sort of model images, image frames uh, or images basically uh, using transformers, you essentially divide the image into a grid and then uh, come up with a token representation for every element in the grid. Right? So that is how you provide uh, input uh, as tokens to a transformer uh, when processing images. So, so uh, unlike the, the older way of doing things where you would basically compute features for images using object detectors, this is a much more efficient way, right? Which is which was basically introduced by the Vision Transformers paper. So that is what is said. So that is what happens in the dual vision encoder module. Uh, so basically it has, uh, uh, broadly it has like two sublayers for images and three sublayers for videos. Okay. Now let's talk about this uh, universal layers module. Again, it's not a single layer. It's basically multiple layers. And uh, the way it basically works is that it takes the text representation, it takes this uh, vision representation and comes up with transformed text and vision representations. Okay, so how does it do this? So basically, uh, you know, it it has a, 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 um, a separated independent processing for the text part and independent processing for the vision part. So as you see, the text part basically just goes through a typical transformer encoder. It has self-attention and feed-forward network. Although it is not shown, you know, it also has residual connections across these layers. And then similarly, you have um, the vision part, which basically uh, actually has three sublayers rather than two. It also takes the original vision uh, vision input as cross attention uh, in the cross attention sublayer in between the self attention and the feed forward. And the interesting aspect is, although these are two different copies of the self of the transformer encoder modules, they basically share the weights in the uh, feed forward uh, layer as well as in the self attention layers. Right? So the attention does not happen across modalities, but the weights are shared. Okay. That's that. Now, uh, from more from an architecture perspective, uh, well, um, they they create two of those modules, M plug two base and M plug two uh, large, which is basically just called as M plug two. Uh, and then for the text encoder part, uh, for encoding text, essentially uh, they basically use the bird base uh, for the M plug two base and bird large for the M plug two large, right? For the visual encoder, they basically use clip VIT models, VIT base 16 and VIT large 14 for uh, the visual encoder, depending on base or large. Uh, number of uh, universal layers, well, they use two universal layers. Number of layers for the fusion module, well, they, uh, so so basically by the way, yeah, after universal layer, there's also fusion module, which is practically, uh, you know, multimodal cross attention module. So essentially you take the text representation, do self attention, but then you take the vision representation and do cross attention and then feed forward. And then that gives you the output for the fusion model module, right? Like several other uh, multimodal modules, uh, multimodal models, right? 
So that's that. So number of layers for the fusion module is set to three or six, depending on whether it is MPLEG2 base or MPLEG2 large. And then uh, lastly, you know, the decoder um, basically is a 12 layer model, uh, 12, layer, 12 layer decoder. Okay. So that's basically the architecture of MPLEG2 model. Next, let me talk about how is MPLUG2 model pre-trained. Well, uh, it is pre-trained using uh, four different objectives. So for the text encoder, it is pre-trained using the MLM objective, mass language modeling, the typical mass language modeling. For uh, the cross-model uh, um, you know, uh, modules, basically they use cross-model uh, matching losses, which is basically a combination of vision language matching. So essentially, if you have an image and a text, do they match or not, binary classification? Or if you have a video and a text, do they match or not, binary classification again? Also, they have a vision language contrastive learning. So given an image a text positive pair, you want to ensure that it has a higher um, you know, probability compared to image and negative text and text and negative image pairs, right? So that's that. They also involve the instruction-based uh, uh, language modeling loss. This is very much similar to the OFA or the Flamingo models, where they basically take handcrafted, uh, they, they create handcrafted uh, instructions to discriminate tasks and modalities. And these tasks and modalities include video image text pairs or video image captioning, video image question answering, text generation, and so on. Okay. Um, as part of pre-training data sets, well, they use three kinds of data sets, image text data sets, and this is the standard 14 million image text data sets, image captioning data sets, more or less, you know, uh, comprising of the five different uh, um, uh, data sets themselves, MS Coco, Visual Genome, uh, Conceptual Captions 3 million, Conceptual Captions 12 million, and SBU Captions. Right? They also involve video text data sets for pre-training, uh, 2.5 million WebVid, uh, 2 million data set, which is basically a uh, you know video data set, web-based video data set. Right? Uh, they also include the text data sets, uh, 20 GB wiki corpus and 350 GB clean common crawl corpus. So how does MPLEG2 perform? Well, MPLEG2 can actually perform several tasks. So it's of course a multimodal model and can do both understanding and generation. So it can actually perform computer vision tasks like image classification, video classification, uh, object detection, and image segmentation. It can also perform natural language processing tasks like text classification, question answering, summarization. It can perform image text tasks uh, like uh, image retrieval, text retrieval, um, you know, uh, sorry, image retrieval or, you know, um, uh, text to image retrieval or image to text retrieval. Uh, question answering, uh, visual question answering, captioning, uh, visual grounding, right? It can also perform video text tasks like video retrieval, video question answering, video captioning. So uh, this is the comparison across several other previously available models. None of the previously available models could basically do all of these tasks. So Mplug basically can is really good at doing all of these different kinds of tasks. Uh, so they basically evaluated the performance of the Mplug models, Mplug2 model on 30 different benchmarks which involves multimodal task language only tasks and vision only tasks and they found that mplug2 actually performs uh, um, you know it basically gives you very good state of the art results or competitive results you know uh, across all of these tasks in fact for some of those tasks it basically gives massive improvements like uh, on msr vtt video question answering and video captioning tasks which are typically considered as very competitive and challenging you know it mplug2 model gives you 48 top one accuracy and 80.3 cider score respectively, right? So, and in general, MPLEG2 basically demonstrates very good zero shot transferability on vision language and video language tasks. Not just you do need to find, so not always does it. Uh, you, of course, if you fine tune, you get better results, but you get good results even in a zero shot manner. So in summary, MPLEG2 uh, is a model for uh, uh, multimodal understanding and generation. It has a modularized design. The modularized design enables uh, uh, you know, both multimodality collaboration while avoiding modality entanglement. So they enable multimodality collaboration using universal modules and the multimodal entanglement happens uh, or is avoided thanks to modality specific modules. Uh, you know, MPLEG2 shows strong performance on a broad range of 30 plus multimodal tasks across text, image and video modalities. OK, that's it for this video. Hope you like the video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my search on my homepage. Thank you.